Welcome to another fine video in my Intro to HTML web video series. This is going to be a short but sweet video. I want to talk a little bit about centering things in the browser or, or in a containing element. This is something that kind of confounds a lot of people or it kind of drives people nuts. The reason is that um, HTML and CSS don't provide a good way of, of centering things. You can center text using text align center and we'll talk about that in the future. But I can't just take a big container and center it. Sure there's a center tag but the center tag is deprecated and it's not semantic in any way. All it does is, is controls the, the display. And remember if it's going to be display it should be done using CSS. So how do we center things using CSS? Well, there's a trick with margins that I'm going to get to. So in order to prepare for this, um, I want to tell you what I want to do. I want to take my entire web page here, all of this, and I want to shrink it down to about 85% the width of the whole page, and then I want to center that 85% width chunk right in the middle of the browser. You see this a lot in, in web pages. So here's how it's done. First things first, I need to wrap up all of my content in one big wrapper div. So I'm going to select it all just really quickly. I'm going to tab it over because I know it's going to be nested inside of something. I'm going to go up to the top above where my header opens and I'm going to add a new div. Open it and then I want to close it all the way down below footer so at the very bottom. So it opens above header closes before or closes below footer. I'm just going to put a little comment in here so it's visible. Okay, so this is the closing div for the wrapper. Wrapper is just a general term for something that's going to wrap up a big chunk of content or a big chunk of structures in a web page. You might wrap up just the main content, you might wrap up the whole page. There are all sorts of different ways to use wrappers and I'll show you several ways. This is the first way, wrapping up all the content. So the div is going to enclose everything from footer all the way up to header inside of this div. Now I'm going to give it an ID. I'm going to call it wrapper just like that. Now I need to create a style for rule for this wrapper. So I'll go up here and do ID wrapper. Make sure I spell it exactly as I've got it spelled down there. And what I want to do is I said I wanted to make all of the content only 85% the width of the browser. So I'm going to set the width on this. Width, 85%. Go to the browser and refresh it. And it shrunk everything down. So these two columns now add up to 85% the width of the browser. This is funny. You might say, hey, man, we, we just set the width of that column to 66% and the other column to 26%. This brings me to the topic again of relative sizes. Relative sizes are relative to their containing elements. So the way this works is our main content here on the left side, this left column, is inside of our div called wrapper. So the relative width of 66% is relative to the overall width of the wrapper, not to the overall width of the page anymore, because now it's enclosed inside of the wrapper. So this is going to take up 66% of our wrapper's width. Our wrapper is 85% the width of the whole page. 
relative sizes. We've seen this before when we looked at figures. This figure takes up 30% the width of its containing element. In this case, that would be the uh, main content div. So it takes up 30% the width of that. And this is another figure over here with an image in it. And it takes up 30% the width of its container. And that um, image's container is the, the right column or the sidebar. So those are relative units, relative sizes. So I shrunk down the whole page to 85%. Now I want to get this thing centered right in the middle. So I've got an even amount of space on the left and right side. Right now it's all shoved over to the left. In order to do this, I, need, I can do this with margins in the wrapper. Now this is a little trick that's kind of cool. Zero, auto. So what does this do? You might recall that if I break it up into four, it would look something like this. Zero, auto, zero, auto. But another shorthand way of doing it, if you know your left and right sides are exactly the same, in other words, top and bottom here are both zero and left and right are both set to auto, I can further shrink it down like this. So top and bottom 0% margin, left and right auto. So what does auto do? Well auto is short for automatic. So it's automatically going to set those margins to be equal to one another and take up all of the remaining space that they can take up. So I go to my browser, shoves everything right to the middle. So it gives it an even amount of margin on the left and right side. So it's going to be approximately 7.5% margin. Okay. So that's how you center things. I've got a wrapper div that wraps up everything in between the header and the footer. I set the width on that wrapper to 85%. And then I set the margins to 0 auto. Okay, so there's a style for it. There's the HTML. Really quick, really simple. And you can do this to just about anything. If I wanted to, I could add this um, margin zero auto to my figures. The figures are set to 30% width. Add the margin zero auto to the figures, and it's going to center those. Pretty cool, huh? Now there's an easier way to do that with text, and we'll get to that in a little bit. But that's how you center things.